It's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii name. 24-7-365. Swimming in the ocean anytime. Take a leap. Aloha kako, and welcome to our first ever inaugural show. I am Laurelyn Salamanca of the Women, Infants, and Children's Services Branch of the Department of Health. As a public health nutritionist, I have worked with Hawaii families for the last eight years. Each month, the Hawaii Department of Health invites you and your friends, family, and community to join us as we discuss public health programs, initiatives, issues, and public health concerns. In this episode, we'll provide an overview of the Department of Health and introduce you to its director, Loretta Fuddy, who will discuss her background and vision for Hawaii. Thank you for joining us. The Hawaii State Department of Health is one of the largest, most diverse, and multifaceted state departments in Hawaii, with a broad mandate to monitor, protect, and enhance the health and environment of all people of Hawaii. The department is organized into four administrations, health resources, environmental health, behavioral health, and general administration. Each administration is led by a deputy director and consists of a multitude of divisions, branches, and offices that run programs located throughout the islands. Three district health offices provide services in Hawaii, Maui, and Kauai counties. Six attached agencies address specialized areas. With programs that range from prenatal to elder care, and registration of vital records to environmental protection. The department conducts assessments, develops policy, and assures access to health services to every member of the community. Our mission is to protect and improve the health and environment for all people in Hawaii. Welcome back. Our special guest for today is Director Loretta Fuddy. Director Fuddy, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'd like to start by in introducing you and, and uh, asking you to share what your personal and professional backgrounds are. Thank you, Lynn. It's an honor to be here with you today. Um, I'm a local girl. I was born and raised in Kaimuki, uh, one of uh, three children, the middle kid, always the one trying to, to catch up with everyone. Um, and I come from a Portuguese and Slovakian background. Uh, and um, most of my life in Kaimuki, uh, attended parochial school, uh, St. Patrick's and Sacred Hearts Academy. I, you know, I was a kid of the 60s, so there was a lot of passion there coming from President Kennedy. So I think, you know, between um, the nuns and uh, my hero, President Kennedy, I, it's kind of instilled in me a real passion for helping people and serving people. And um, I was always very active with, with groups uh, from even kid time. And then once I graduated from high school, um, I knew I wanted to do something for that was involved with helping people. Wasn't quite sure what. Thought maybe teaching, but I knew I needed a college education. Um, being the middle kid, um, we didn't have really the resources for me, so, but it was very important for me. And I want to encourage everyone to get a college degree because it's very important, I think, to, for shaping your career. So I worked um, throughout all of my degrees. I went on and got a bachelor's in sociology. Um, and from there, I really learned more about social work and knew that that's really what I wanted to do. I stayed out a year, I worked at, at a bank, um, saved up all my money and then went back to the School of Social Work at the University of Hawaii. Um, and my passion was working with women and families and young children. And that's what I kind of focused on, working with families. And then from there, I, my first job was with Catholic Charities up at Kalihi Valley Housing. And um, just pounding the pavement, working with the families there. Uh, that was my first introduction actually to public health because public health nursing had an office uh, as well as Catholic Charities in the Kalihi Valley Housing. So we worked closely together with, with many of the families. Um, then I um, sort of evolved into public health. Uh, my first uh, position with the Department of Health was as a social worker 
with um, what was called the Jefferson Orthopedic Unit. So it was children that had physical delays. And from there, I worked at the, was a state-operated clinic, which was the Waimanalo um, Maternity and Infant Care Project and Children and Youth Project, it was called back then, M-I-C-C-N-Y. Not Mickey Mouse, <laughs> it was a professional organization, um, and it was an interdisciplinary um, team. And it was from there, I think, that I really found the passion for public health uh, and began to realize the uh, importance of working one-on-one -on -one with families, but the greater importance of looking at policy and looking at forming programs. And so I went back to school um, and got my master's in public health. And, and then years later, I went on to Johns Hopkins to look at working on a doctorate in public health. So that's kind of laid the foundation for me and the passion for working for almost, what, 36 years now with uh, the Department of Health. So it's just kind of slowly building, and now you're in this new role mm -hmm. as a director of the department. Um, what are you looking forward to the most in, in your new role? I think what I'm looking forward to the most is really working with my fellow colleagues in the Department of Health. I am really very honored that we have such high quality, professional, and dedicated staff. And one of the, the issues that I'm looking at is how do we harness all of that energy? Mm -hmm. And how do we make an impact for public health? Um, how do we really pull together, together as a team? And part of that is putting together a strategic plan. And I know we'll be talking a little bit more about that. But putting down some clear goals and objectives and having everyone aligned towards those goals and objectives so that we can have a broader collective impact. Um, the other exciting thing is working with um, our other agencies. I, I think uh, Governor Abercrombie has really set the path for us to look at how can we more cooperatively work together because we know we can't impact health without looking at all of society. Okay. And I think maybe a, a lesser known fact about you is that you are the first social worker to take on the role as director, yes. correct? Um, how do you anticipate that this would affect, um, I guess, your tasks and responsibilities? Well, my, my first profession was social work. Uh, and when I began to get more involved with public health, I felt it was a natural marriage between social work and social medicine. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at public health, we look at the social determinants of health, which means what are those things that impact your health? Where you live, your, your ethnicity, um, some of your education, and all of those things are social work. So when you look at the elements of social work um, and how they impact health, I think that's, that's really important. It gives you a broad frame um, to look at health. And more importantly, when you look at health equities, um, I think you're looking at what are those things that contribute from your social background? Um, and how can we improve those areas? And social work has a really good foundation for that. I think social work gives you um, a good ability to look at what are some of the needs of the community. Public health gives you the ability to really analyze those problems, use the data, and then to come up with clear directions to improve health. Wow. Well, I think that's a good um, segue into my next question is um, kind of defining the basic terms of what public health is. And so you having defined that, how do you see the healthcare community and the Department of Health working together? Public health is very different than when you go into your doctor. Um, and that's a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. Um, ours is a relationship with the whole community mm -hmm. and, and the society as a whole. Uh, when you look at health, we need to look at those things in the community which impact health. Uh, we need to look at laws and we need to look at um, regulations, immunization. We need to look at um, ability to have safe streets. We need to look at um, protection of the entire um, population. So it's a little different. So what are those things that we'll look at for the, the whole of the community as opposed to one-on-one -on -one delivery of care? Now there are some things that we do like health education and promotion. You do that in WIC where you talk with, uh, with a one-on-one -on -one with the families. But again it's setting some clear educational guidelines and setting some clear information that we get out there. 
and that it's uniform uh, for everyone to have. Oh, well, thank you. This is a great introduction about the department and about your personal background mm -hmm. as well. Um, at this point, we're going to take a short break for some important public health messages. Your work is done, but your day is far from over, and you know what you need for a little pick-me-up. Come on, you can do it. Make that call. Hey, how about a Pahana walk instead? Yes! Stay a step ahead, walk with a friend, and let the calories burn off while the stress melts away. After 30 minutes, I have even more energy than when I started. And with her kids, she needs it. Hey, <laughs> let's step it up. You can still eat healthy at your favorite lunch place if you make good choices. You can do it. Go for the salad. Yes. It's easy. I have some fruit instead of pastries at breakfast. Then I have more veggies at lunch or dinner. I just feel healthier with more servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Fruits and veggies, good choice, good eating. Real good. <clears throat> Did you know that taking a 10 minute walk can change your life? Come on, you can spare 10 minutes. Take a step, one step. That's it, yes. I started walking 10 minutes once a day, then twice a day, then three times a day. Now I walk 30 minutes a day, five days a week. I feel better. I look better. I do look better, don't I? Oh, yeah. And all started with just one step. Come on, step it up. If you'd like your family to eat healthier, make good choices here so they can make good choices at home. Go for the fruit. Yes, it's true. It all starts in the store. And now each of us has one more serving of fruit and one more serving of vegetables every day. Fruits and veggies. Good choice, good eating. So, oh no. The Department of Health's mission is to protect and improve the health and environment of all people in Hawaii. And um, I here that the department has a new strategic plan and you've bought this, you've yes. bought this uh, very beautiful document. Yes, the department's uh, very proud of this effort. We've worked collectively as a department to put this together. It's called Foundations for Healthy Generations because we know that we need to have some solid foundation. We need to protect the health of our, our generations, our future generations, our children that are coming behind us. We need to look at the full life spectrum from infancy to senior life. Um, but we need to look at uh, some, some core pieces. So we have set down some five strategic intents, if you want to say, um, to look at health equity. Uh, we feel that's one of the major foundations for um, health. If we can assure the health of all in, in the state, we know that chronic disease is one of the major cost riders in our healthcare system. So our second platform is really looking at health promotion and disease prevention. Living in Hawaii, we know the, all too well the effects of a hurricane or a tsunami or any kind of other threat, environmental or um, warfare. So we need to be prepared for that. You know, we are like very isolated. We're the most isolated place in the entire world. We need to have our own resources so that we can be better prepared to address a threat that comes from, from the outside. So that's our third piece. Uh, our environment is very, very special to us. And when we look at our water, our air, so we want to make sure that we have clean and safe health environment. Those are really core pieces of health having healthy, good water, having um, safe foods, all of those things are very critical to us. And of course, the last piece is we always want excellence in service. So those are our five um, components of Foundations for Healthy Generations. And we're having all of the departments, all of the programs uh, align to this and to uh, address their programs to help advance these five areas. It's very much in sync with the governor's New Day plan and um, it very much aligns with that mm -hmm. um, in the three components that, we, that he has for um, uh, sustainable economy, um, transforming government, and um, investing in people. So it really fits with those three, four, those three components. So he has three, we have five. 
Sounds great. Well, I think for the audience, what they might want to hear is how this plan um, will translate into their everyday lives, you know, to their families, their communities, themselves. Might you have some uh, specific examples of how that will be, how folks can see that? I think much of what we do, unfortunately, um, will be transparent. If we do our job right, you're not going to really know much difference, mm -hmm. um, except maybe in the service area. We really want to be responsive to our consumers. So we would like more timely response to um, when you apply for a permit, when you apply for your vital records. So we're looking at all of our healthcare um, data systems and all of our application processes to be very responsive to the community as they come in. We would like to have the availability of services. Uh, and I think that will, when we work with some very Communities that are at risk will be looking at how can we address that better, how can we get more resources to some of the, these communities. Uh, so that may be a, a difference that they'll see. Our messaging hopefully will be more unified. So as we come out with our public health messages like Take the Leap mm -hmm. um, or Living Healthy, Healthy Hawaii Initiative, all of those things we, we would like to have um, be consistent so that you get a clear message on what, is, what are healthy behaviors. Um, we'll also be looking at things legislatively uh, as we try and improve our, our environment around us, as we look at having safe streets, as we look at um, having substance products not available to use, mm -hmm. taking those things off of the market. So protection for that. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Well, how can, I guess, if people want to find more information about the strategic plan, how can they find and access the plan? The plan will be on our website. Okay. And we'll give you the, the website at the very end to let you know what that website is. Um, we will be distributing it to our community partners as well. And I think the main thing is to engage with our, our programs that we have. Um, much of this is to keep us on target as the, the health professionals. One of the things that we will be doing is putting out a dashboard, um, which is kind of exciting for us, because we would like to be more transparent mm -hmm. so that the community can really see what are those um, health issues that we're addressing and what kind of progress are we making so we can pra um, track that over time. So if we're looking at chronic disease, it, are we impacting the obesity rates? Are we imp impacting the diabetes rates? Are we uh, favorably reducing infant mortality? All of these things will be tracked um, and that the public can be more attuned to what it is that we're actually doing. Yeah. Well, just to bring it to a more personal level, might there be any health tips, favorite health tips that you can share with the audience? Well, the favorite health tips, I think, is after just coming through a bout with the flu, mm -hmm. it is really to, to uh, keep yourself healthy. Um, by having good nutrition, taking time to um, deal with stress. You know, this is always a stressful job and I always make sure that I take time to um, relax and to exercise and um, when, you know, to take a lot of liquids. This time it's very important to, to hydrate and um, the, I think that's, that's one of the most important things is to take care of yourself and take care of your, your loved ones, um, to be attentive you know, if there's anything that comes up, to come and ask questions. You mentioned something about social determinants of health. If you could explain a little bit more about that. Yeah. When you look at health, everyone thinks that you get ill at one point in time. But it, it really is multiple things that impact your health. And a lot of that has to do um, with even when we're growing up. Um, and I think that's why one of the, the importance of early childhood, because those are critical times in, in life. So how you deal with stress as a child will impact how you deal with stress as an adult. Mm -hmm. So th those are important pieces. Your nutrition that you had as a child will impact your, your health in the future. So when you look at those, what are those social determinants of health? It's not only the food that we eat. It's not only um, the, it, it, it includes the family that we grew up in. It in includes some of the experiences that we had as a young child. It's our education level. We do know that um, the higher your education, the healthier you are. 
Um, some of it has to do with where you live. We know that rural communities are at greater risk for um, health conditions because they have limited access. Some of it has to do with your own culture because you may not reach out for health care. Um, and so we have to deliver health care differently. We maybe need to reach in rather than reach out. Um, one of our, our important programs that I can talk about that we've received awards is the Healthy Start Home Visitation Program. And I think that's a perfect example of looking at the social determinants of health. We want to improve the, the health of a child. But what are we working with? We're working with the relationship between the mother and the father and the child. We're, we're working with assuring that that child has early childhood education and getting them that kind of information. Um, we're, we're getting them the right information like you have through WIC and making sure that they have good nu nutritional pieces. We're working with the parents to make sure that they bring their child in for immunizations and well child care. Um, it may be helping them with transportation. It may be helping them finding appropriate housing. All of these things contribute to health. So I think that's a, a good example of what we talk about the social determinants of health. Yeah. And all this is critical in prevention yes. before it becomes a crisis and they need intervention. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Well, are there any last minute thoughts that you might want to share with the audience? Well, I think um, public health is on the move. Um, I believe that we have a department that's very passionate about public health. We're very, very dedicated. We want to use the science tools that we have, but we also want to use the new technologies that we have today to improve our ability to reach out to people and to touch their lives and to improve it. We really want to have these foundations for healthy generations. Well, thank you, Director, and thank you all for joining us today. For a transcript of the show, please go to www.hawaii.gov forward slash DOH. Now join us again next time on Foundations for Healthy Generations. Ahui ho! Gotta get up, it's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii name. 24 7, 365. Swimming in the ocean anytime. 